Dusk City Outlaws, a uh, um, a fantasy heist role playing game by Rodney Thompson, produced by uh, published by Scratchpad Publishing. Uh, this is done for Geek Therapeutics cohort number thirteen. Um, a little about myself: I am a uh, game master for many many years, and I'm a board game designer. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce our various players. Uh, please tell us who you are and uh, what your character is, uh, which cartel you work for, and what your specialty is. Um, take this across the line. Sam? Hi, I'm Sam. Um, I will be playing Octavius Wake. He is a gravedigger cartel, and he is a cleaner specialty. Michael? Hello, I'm Michael Garrett. I'll be playing William Stryker. He is part of the Wardens of the Night Cartel, and his specialty is sharpshooter. Nicole? Hi, I'm Nicole. I'm playing Elenia. <clears throat> she is from the Circle Cartel, and she is an alchemist. Jasmine? Hi, I'm Jasmine. I'm playing Cordelia. She's from the Mummers Cartel, and her specialty is a grifter. John? Uh, I am John. Um, tonight I'll be playing Morgan. He is of the uh, Vesper Society and he is a poisoner. And Philip. Hi, I'm Philip. Uh, I'm going to be playing Takashi Renzo. Uh, he's in the Red Lotus Society and he's a sharpshooter. Right. So um, to set the stage, we have. Uh, it is uh, the city of New Dunhaven. It's a sprawling metropolis, like a like a, a meta, like a, a beefed up version of uh, Renaissance Venice, with canals and roads and districts and a lot of people packed together and a lot of places for crime to happen. Now, uh, all the members of the crew tonight are members of various different cartels. They work for different company for different. Uh, criminal organizations and they all work together as part of the arrangement the arrangement with a capital a is a way to, to sort of if there's a big job to be performed a bunch of different crew, cartels get pulled in different crew members to ensure everyone gets a slice of the pie and there's no uh real infighting over that kind of stuff uh, so we're going to begin with the crew getting the job um it is a appropriately enough thursday um, Thursday evening, uh, the sun has gone down, and um, each of the crew are, are out doing a various, doing their various things on a Thursday evening when a messenger comes um, with a uh, with a discreet carriage that will take you to where you're, uh, where the patron for this job, which uh, which is a mission that I wrote called the Orca Job, um, uh, will be taking place in. Um, Real quick, I'm going to go through each of the characters, and I want to find out what your character might be doing on a given Thursday evening. You know, right as the uh, uh, right as the sun has sort of set on the horizon. And uh, I'll just take this in the order I have. William. Yeah. So uh, as the sun is setting, I would definitely want to climb up to the rooftops just to keep an eye on things going on in the city, any easy marks that I could possibly take advantage of. Yeah. Uh, Cordelia. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm just... No problem. Oh, how about I come back to you? Yes, Alina? sounds good. Sorry, which, which name did you say? Elena? That's me. Thank you, Sam, <laughs> for clarifying that. Um, I would just probably be hanging out, um, practicing some alchemy. So maybe in like, uh, uh, like the back of a shop somewhere. Yeah. Octavius? Octavius Wake is uh, walking through the largest uh, graveyard in the city, um, 
just just calmly strolling through the graveyard, looking at the gravestones, uh, nodding at some of them like they're old friends, kind of like cocking his head at others, maybe maybe whistling a slight tune to himself. Morgan? Uh, Morgan would be having a drink at a fine establishment, um, not really conversing too much with others, but uh, listening at this point and uh, trying to pay attention likewise for easy marks this evening. Uh, Takashi. Um, Takashi would be in the middle of an interrogation, getting information from somebody, um, just constantly rolling a dice and just letting the numbers decide randomly what uh, happens to his the untimely individual, while also drinking um, some milk. Yeah. And Cordelia. Uh, she's going to be hustling uh, whoever she can find at the local tavern. All right. So, um, a, uh, a a courier comes up to you with a, a note, and it's pressed with a wax seal, and the seal specifically has some you know, symbols that says that, that you've been called up for a job, and you know, per the rules, you're kind of obligated to go. Uh, a carriage with a uh, with discreet curtains takes you to a, a noble, um, uh, to a, a, one of the noble districts, um, to the, uh, to the residence, uh, around the back of, of, um, notes, Eleanor Dayweather. She is a prominent, uh, Vesper, uh, who quite noteworthily with her, um, with her, uh, broken copper casino raked in a fortune and was able to buy herself a title elevating her status into that of nobility um this this caused some problems with some of the uh the nobles the old money crowd to see new money come in um and she is connected with the vespers which is the organization which is tends to run the casinos and whatnot and, and so you've been brought into her established her estate um to perform a uh to perform a job you're brought in uh through the servants entrance and then up to back doors through to a a, a fine parlor with all kinds all manners of finery in it um but none of that like air that you might get if you were to visit a uh an old money house um she is in her 50s her hair has gone gray um but there's evidence that she uh, uses various dyes on it to uh, and and has a uh, beauty regime to keep herself looking a lot younger. And uh, yeah, she, you're brought in and she says, ah, come in, come in. I uh, I trust the ride was good and I have a matter for you to, uh, uh, for you, uh, that's a bit of a personal thing. The standard deviation from the standard job, but the pay will be just as good. Um, you see, uh, it's it's known that I am something of a collector, and there was a rare orchid that came in um, just earlier this week on a on a ship, and I was not able to purchase this orchid. It was stolen, stolen by a more well connected uh, lady, um, Asana Silvertree. Lady Silvertree used her connections and her money to. Uh, to claim this uh to claim this prize which should rightfully be mine and so i uh so i called you in to make things right and get me my orchid now normally we wouldn't be able to just break into a noble's house and steal it that's not that would be bad for the cartels in general instead um i found out just recently that she is immortalizing this orchid as a glass flower and she has as i understand it her favorite jeweler um gelfried cotter of cotter's jewelries uh cotter's jewels um who is crafting a, a replica out of silver and gold and fine uh fine jewels to immortalize this the replica well let's just say all i care about is gaining the orchid gaining the prize which should rightfully be mine and that is your mission um in the next uh, two days, 
Um, it is scheduled to go back into Lady Silvertree's Manor, where it will be untouchable for us. That's Saturday afternoon. But before then, it is still vulnerable at Cotter's Jewels. Um, I need you to steal this for me and take it to the drop-off drop off point. Um, and it needs to remain undamaged. Uh, it would not prove to anybody's benefit if the, the flower was destroyed. Um, as a benefit, as a slight bonus this is optional but if you find a way to damage destroy or steal the 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 glass flower replica as it's as it's been created that would uh i would consider that a boon and i would give you a little bit of extra um a little bit extra uh on the side also i'm kind of pacifist at heart and i would appreciate it if uh nobody were tremendously injured about this um so, um, yeah, th nothing that's nothing that's permanent. Now, um, I'm sure you have many questions, and I'm not certain I have all of the answers. But what I do have for you is I have a uh, a quiet sitting room with no exterior windows that uh, you will be able to plan in. Um, it is uh, located in my guest house out there, so uh, you should be able to get get to it uh, fine but first if anybody has any questions i might be able to answer those for you octavius will oh, sorry, go for it michael uh what do you know about the jeweler, jeweler's shop i know that it is lady silvertree's personal jeweler um i believe it is uh, located in a merchant district but i don't know much more Octavius will step forward and say, um, what counts as grievously injured? How injured is too injured for your pacifist tastes? Nobody murdered. But I understand you're professionals, and far be it from me to tell you how to do your job. And if accidents happen, I will be grieved, but not... Um, but not a uh, uh, not tremendously put out. It is a dangerous world. Accidents are common. Mor Morgan uh, steps forward afterwards, uh, and as a member of the Vesper family, would he know that Lady Dayweather is uh, of reputable background? What she, uh, she yeah, yeah, what would she, I know about her? She's well respected in the Vespers. Um, and she is, uh, has a, uh, uh, and you know, this job, like you pull this job off and you're going to get paid. It's not, there's no chance of a double cross. She's also the, the arrangement, the big A works with around, uh, you know, certain, the, the black council and checks and balances. So, um, there's nothing that there's nothing from the, the from the patrons end, nothing from Dave Weather's side of things to, uh, to be a problem for you. All right. Well, if you have uh, no further questions, then I will uh, let you go out um, and uh, and uh, to continue with your planning. Um, uh, my butler, Brian, will see you out. And she made it pretty clear that this is done. Um, unfortunately, during the night, it's started raining, um, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. As you now move out to... Uh, um, out to her guest house. Um, and, uh, and you are now, what we're going to do is we're now going to go into a planning phase. And let me go ahead and briefly explain how this whole game is broken down. Unlike a regular, um, un unlike a regular RPG where it's sort of free form and everything goes, this game sort of plays in, in phases, um, and, and scenes. Um, so she's given you your timeline. You have, it's Thursday evening, so it's the night phase right now, and it's leaving uh, Saturday afternoon, so during the day on Saturday. So that's tonight, tomorrow morning, tomorrow evening, and then finally uh, Saturday night, or Saturday morning, 
because that's how time works, Saturday morning for that. Now, this first phase is a, um, is a planning scene. Um, I'm going to give you guys um, 15 minutes in real time of which to discuss your plans, make it, uh, figure out what you're doing, what you need to do uh, on there and, um, uh, and, and work from that. Then we will move on to the next phase where there will be a chance for you guys to do legwork uh, or possibly even just go for it if you think that you're ready. Um, real quick, I'm going to ask if tech has capability of putting a timer on screen. I can try and put a timer on screen. Give me one minute. I gotta give me just a second. I'm gonna research that real quick and see what I can pull up. Um, okay. Otherwise, I can just set a timer. I I have a a device here which is useful for doing all kinds of stuff, including timers. So, um, it just takes me a moment to let's see a countdown timer. Yeah, countdown timer. Fifteen minutes. All right. Let me just look at this real quick and see how to do that. Um, and I have to, it's a video guide. Give me just half a second. So I wait. should have prepped this. You know, yeah. we, I had plenty of time to prep this. I knew this was coming. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. Um, keep so building while, the scene and I'll let you know. So uh, while he's working on that. Group planning time. This is group planning time. Sweet. An extra minute. Slow down. It'll be okay. You don't have to get that time now, going anytime soon. Um, some of you may already have information about this, uh, about uh, about the events. Um, does anybody in the party know things about nobles? This would be on your cartel sheet under things you know about, or possibly under your specialty uh, might add an extra no thing you know about. Uh, yeah, does, any, does anybody know anything about merchants? One of my skills is gossip with merchants, and I I know the right kind of people. The right kind of people is a euphemism for criminals. I can gossip with nobles. I have that in my skill set. Okay. Uh, might be a good idea for you guys to real quick um, go around tell us what your character like if your character has any nice special power special abilities uh and maybe the top like two skills you've got don't worry about mentioning the percentages um but but like the like the the two or three best best abilities you have um, yeah i'm trying to figure out where special powers would exist because they weren't in the copy paste things i don't think uh, no they're not in the copy paste things there was too much data for me to copy paste that Got it. So you will have to look at your specialties and your cartels. Uh, also, I'll mention that everybody has one influence. Um, now, influence is a um, uh, influence is a uh, 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 it, it represents um, clout that you've got with your um, with your cartel. Uh, it also represents a certain amount of money that you have. Everybody starts with one, and the table itself starts with one as well. Um, and then each of your cartels will give you things that your influence can be good used Hello, for. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my So YouTube my abilities channel. seem to be uh, cleaning up after... Uh, uh, you know, cleaning the scene if we leave corpses mm -hmm. and stuff behind, which reduces heat from the yes. previous scene. Um, and I can I can make a minor character in the background have been bribed and have been bribed all along. Yes, the cleaner is uh, very good for the uh, for that. Um, because there's a lot of stuff going on, I'm leaving it to your character to, to the players to remember that you've got things like that. Yeah. Um. All of all of which is to say, uh, I know we haven't we haven't done the go around in the skills thing yet, but um, 
I, I imagine that when we get to legwork, we're gonna, we're gonna want to do stuff like case the joint and and talk to people about like what's really going on with this flower. Yeah. Now, uh, if in case you guys have not gotten up to this point, which might be helpful, this is a heist game. The 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 plot is you're performing a heist, and this focuses heavily on the legwork and the planning um, <clears throat> and the and the making things go right. Because if you do it right. It will run like a Ocean's Eleven, you know, flawless clockwork kind of, you know, Italian job kind of thing where just like everything falls into place and there won't be any scramble. There won't be any other problems like that. Um, and I will say that I have run this and had no, uh, had like had the players cover every angle and the job went completely according to plan um, once. All right, all quick interjection. Is this supposed to be a mission timer? Uh, sure. Okay. This is just for the, the, the talking scene here. Okay, talking scene. Um, um, it's just a timer that we only need for a bit. Yeah, I'm getting it up right now, so give me just half a tick. Oops. Yeah, so this is the planning, right? Like this is this is what we're talking about. Yep. You are planning right now. Um, so, what do you know? What do you have? Do you have any ideas? Now is the time to bring it up. So, I'd certainly like, and I think this falls within my character skill set, maybe some of yours too, um, to like get like city planning documents about this area that we're going to be going into. Like, if there's like sewers nearby or. Uh, just like get an idea of like the routes in and out of the place. Um, it it feels to me it feels to Octavius like this uh, like this like this mission's below our pay limit. What, a simple theft from a from a from a shopkeeper's shop. So uh, he's kind of suspicious that there might be more going on behind the scenes. That's fair. And definitely. Um, sorry, you go first. It's okay. I definitely agree with you. De want, I want to know as much information about this shop as possible. Um, if there's anything that we got to worry about as far as traps, is there any, you know, entrances that are used for smuggling things in and out? I definitely want to get as much information about it as possible and, and even have maybe like an eagle eyes view um, from up top so that we can kind of communicate and, and kind of call the shots from there i can um assume different identities so i can always go in and scope the place out from the inside nice yeah nice. that'll give us a good inside look um like if if we have someone scouting outside someone scouting inside we can all do our own thing during the legwork scene right like we don't all have yes. to be together cool yeah during legwork scenes you will each take take the lead on one Nice. So outside look, inside look, administrative, like, uh, you know, big picture look. Uh, what else? So one of the things I can spend influence on, well, two of the things that might be helpful um, is I can acquire an artifact of the Vladlov, Vladov Empire to use as a bribe if we actually like just want to try to talk to the jeweler and be like, yo, give us this thing for this. Um, or I can position a few circle <laughs> bruisers around the perimeter of a building to deter interlopers. So when we actually get to the point where we're like breaking in, that could come in handy perhaps. Um, and my skills, like I can use an alchemical object. Um, I can, and then like I have like four that are tied for like my second spot um appraise something can steal an object gossip with merchants and navigate bureaucracy so potentially i can gossip with merchants and see if i can find out anything um or just like concealing an object obviously that would come in handy when we actually get it <laughs> yeah i mean I, I i do like the idea of um taking some legwork just to figure out like how how honest this merchant is like we can just go up to him and be like yo dog give us the give us the flower that would be uh, phenomenal. Does anybody know anything about merchants? Uh, 
Um, you mean in the sense of it says in our character sheet knowledge? Yeah, in the sense uh, under yeah. your cartel, uh, it would typically say things you know about. I know about the docks, which means we offload stuff to companies slash merchants. Would I know anything? Yeah, I mean, conceivably, how the how the rose got here, like what the yeah. how it got into. I know town. our ships and sailing and stuff. Was there any shipments, any logistical things that we went out that they might have uh, some some kind of itinerary? I think in this invoice. case that the docks aren't going to be that useful for you, but that could be an angle that you could approach. Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get the timer up tonight. Um, it'll That's take fine. some more research. I apologize for putting you on the spot. Thank you for all your hard work. No problem. Uh, what I can do, though, is I can spend an influence to obtain one firearm or an explosive for the duration of the job. So if we need to blow something up, <laughs> I'm your guy. Yeah. Also, also we need to shoot somebody. Also, as a note, because you're, we've got two different sharpshooters in the group, uh, Takashi could have a black powder rifle uh, instead of the, the heavy crossbow or longbow or whatever your preferred range weapon is, because... As a member of the Red Lotus Society, you control um, gunpowder flow into the city and have access to those kinds of weapons. Nice. Might put us They're in real hot strong. water in terms of not leaving a body count. <laughs> I mean, I can so, shoot people in the legs. So the uh, as a specific note on that, your job is to get the orchid. Um, and if you happen to do it with a zero body count you'll get extra extra reward and if you happen to manage to destroy the glass flower replica you'll get extra reward those are stretch goals they're not required for the job the job is steal the orchid undamaged I feel that destroying the glass flower should be relatively easy you have two explosive experts after all uh, <clears throat> as a poisoner it uh, appears that i can uh, create one dose of poison uh, that I can describe. And again, this doesn't have to be necessarily a killing uh, right. dosage. We can uh, irritate, influence, intoxicate other targets. Um, so if we want to incapacitate, I'm thinking that I might be able to create a powder or some kind of uh, poison that's going to be able to incapacitate, knock people down, uh, and then as long as we have some kind of mask to be able to go in afterwards, um, we should be able to be okay uh, with uh, with that. Yeah. Mayor Ford, how, how much of a stir would this cause? So if we just like, uh, how important is subtlety? If we convince the guy well, to hand it over to us, presumably they know our face, right? Well, I um, can generate distractions. So then we get less hate as well. Hmm. That's fair. Okay. Yeah, I like I like all of those potential avenues of, of exploration. So I have been watching the time here, and you guys have about four minutes left. So maybe come up with... Uh, it sounds like you guys are going to go for general legwork. Now might be a good time to discuss what kind of information you think you need. Also, for the alchemist and the poisoner and anybody else who might have that on your sheet, um, if you need to do stuff, quote, during a planning scene, this is during a planning scene. Does anyone know anything about, like, watch patterns? Like, does anyone have an in on, like, whatever the city guard is? You know, it's a merchant district. Merchant districts are patrolled, but not very heavily. Handy. Um, and I guess, does anyone know... I guess this would be the knowledge nobility thing. It'd be nice to know if um, I imagine the the lady uh, Silver Tree, um, mm -hmm. if she cares so much about this orchid, she might have left her own guards, some of her own guards in the uh, in the area. That'd be a good thing to know about before going in. Um, I can. Well, if she's holding a party, I can gain access into the party and speak to her inconspicuously and mm -hmm. find out what she knows about. The replica and cool. the orchid. That seems like a, a thing that we can investigate during this like work scene coming up. Like, okay. does she have a party happen between today and Saturday? Yeah, no, everyone has a party on Friday, right? They're nobles. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
that's that's when you have parties. <laughs> if we're gonna do um, JD's poison, I can alchemize uh, like handkerchiefs into like uh, like a gas mask for us, so that like if it is like a gaseous kind of substance or whatever. Um, and it says I have to describe like one potential like hazard or whatever mm -hmm. to the user. Yep. Um, I guess the potential hazard could be that we have. Um, like a time limit, like it's only good for, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how time works here, an hour, half an hour, whatever. Half an hour? <laughs> six minutes. No, no. It's, it's good for 3D six minutes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I thought this was a D8 and D10 system. <laughs> I don't oh, know. I just happen um, to have some dice in front of me, so that's why. My, mine says, I just saw something on the Shred Lotus Society. It says, you're conspicuous in merchant, noble, and in the slums. What does that mean? Ah, uh, that actually will lead into the next part of this when we're talking about legwork scenes and conspicuous and heat. Um, Wait, real quick, real quick, before, since we only have like a minute and a half left of this. Mm -hmm. um, it might be interesting to research the, 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 the orchid, too, to figure out like why people care about this this flower. Okay. If, if anyone wants to, to grab that task. Does anybody have, actually, yeah, I don't need to ask. Takashi knows of Tawan culture? Um, yes, I know. Orchids. Yeah. Um, orchids, as, as in this game, as in real life, are rare because they have so such huge like diversity in where they are. Um, and uh, Taylor, uh, like, people will hunt down orchids and it's considered to be a massive status symbol because they're rare oh. and because they're rare, they're valuable. And because they're <laughs> valuable, they're, they end up being rare and sought after uh, prizes by rich people with nothing better to spend their money on. Otherwise they're just a flower, although pretty. Okay, so we shouldn't expect the orchid to like uh, explode or something. No. No magical properties. You okay. shouldn't. Ex you shouldn't. <laughs> I won't say that it's going to be unexpected, but it's that would be unexpected. Okay. I'm not saying that it can't happen. I'm just saying it would be unexpected that it happened. All right. I'll be very sneaky and get the exact location of the orchid if I need to. All right. So we are now moving away from um, the planning scene. Um, the rest of you head out into uh, the various places um, that you would do for your nighttime. We sort of abstracted out because as I mentioned at the very beginning, you guys all had things that you were doing and those things don't necessarily stop. So we abstracted out where you go out and you eat and you, you manage your business and we move on to the next, uh, the next part of, of the, uh, of the scene where we go into a day phase. Um, now, um, during this, typically at this point in time, uh, you guys would have a, um, you guys would be doing legwork scenes, um, but you have three options when it comes to, uh, when it comes to performing your scenes and doing things, which is planning, which we just finished, legwork, which each of you will take take the lead on a short legwork scene and um and then finally there's a drama scene which is usually reserved for go time on that now before we go on too much further um there is a thing in the middle which is labeled as heat um heat represents how much the law enforcement are on you for doing criminal activities which is what you guys are you're planning a job um and just naturally for being there, everybody generates one heat. Now, um, if you perform a legwork scene in a place that you are conspicuous, you will generate a couple of extra heat for, for, that, uh, for that spot. And this is tracked in that big round daub right there in the middle that's labeled as heat. Currently you have six, because there are one, two, four, six of you. Um, heat can also go up if you are reckless, noisy, messy, uh, you know, get, get spotted in a bad way. Um, and then that, that is actually added on at the end of every scene. Fortunately, you have a cleaner so that if somebody really messes something up, the cleaner can come in and smooth things off a bit there. 
um, functionally in the game mechanics standpoint, I have a variety of things that I can do called complications that I can bring in by spending heat. So if you guys have generated very little heat, then I, the, but my hands are tied. There's lim limited stuff that I can bring in to throw monkey wrenches in. But if you generate a lot of heat, you know what? Generate a lot of heat. Let's just, just go with that. What could possibly go wrong? No, nah, yeah. What could possibly go wrong? So uh, now we're going to go real quickly and we're going to go through plague work scenes, presumably, unless you guys want another planning, planning spot. Um, during the legwork scene, each of the each of the members of the crew is going to take the lead. Um, and this is actually on you. Um, under the journal, there is a section uh, which is the scene guide. I'm actually just going to show this to everybody. Um, this would be in the backs of, of the player cards. Um, and it talks about what during the legwork scene, and that blue box in the middle says, tell me what you want out of the scene, where you're going to go get it. Uh, how you're going to get it and who you might interact with. And then I will help work that out and we'll play it out. Uh, usually it culminates in one or two dice rolls at the end. Uh, who wants to take a legwork scene? Question for um, me and JD, the alchemist and the poisoner, is mm -hmm. that our legwork or was no, that just... You what? did that during a planning scene. Okay. It's done. You okay. have... Um, half a dozen of these uh, gas masks that will block out poison. They work for a variable length of time, so there might be a problem with them. And um, and Morgan has put together um, uh, a gas that, what does that gas do again? I forgot. It's a, it's a aerated powder, if I remember correctly. That's, that's correct. It's triggered by um, uh, fire. Uh, so maybe a cigarette or whatever the case may be. Okay. And uh, the one thing I forgot to mention, I think I saw in there is uh, the danger associated with it. Uh, so if you do touch it, though, it does cause second degree burns uh, to your whatever source. So you definitely don't want to touch it. <laughs> All right. So the idea is that you kind of like vial it into the air and ignite it and it, and it incapacitates. Nice. Okay. All right. Um, um, go ahead. Yeah, if, if, if no one else wants to go first, I will happily take the legwork scene to, uh, to go to some administrative district and uh, try to get the like uh, blue blueprints of the, the jeweler's shop and kind of surrounding area. What I want to get out of the scene is like uh, entrances and exits, um, especially if there's hidden ones. The place I'm going to get it is some kind of administrative district. Sure. How I'm going to get it is by... Uh, uh, looking through files and, and paperwork, and there might be some like bureaucrat there to interact with. That I think is precisely correct. I would say that there is a bureaucrat um, who is uh, just like the boring clerk that is um, that that works that that finds filing systems to be fascinating, um, and basically just has this job of maintaining records because you need to maintain records if you're going to do new construction or whatnot. Um, now, in order to not raise suspicion and do any, a lot of things like that, um, the uh, you're probably going to need to do any sort of convincing. And I should also ask, other people can come with you on these legwork scenes if you think you're going to need help. In this case, I don't think you're going to need any help. I think you're probably just going to be able to handle it. God, I hope so. Um, but um, <laughs> And this would be taking place in, you know, probably a commoner's district, you know, just wherever they figure it was important, put it down, that's not particularly valuable real estate. Um, so you're most likely not going to be conspicuous there. Correct. If you are, let me know. Nope, yep. All right. And I think it's just, you've got to convince him that you like, that to help you find the thing you're looking for, unless you've got some other plan on that. And this would be, um bureaucracy there's specifically is a uh navigate bureaucracy, navigate bureaucracy yeah. skill yeah um, i mean the the approach i think is going to be like like me rolling in and, and just like like straightforward like like glaring down at him from from my kind of tall height and saying i i need to see these files and it's kind of like yeah it seems very straightforward so um so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our first roll of the game 
Um, you uh, do you know what your navigate bureaucracy skills? Um, it is, is eighty. It is eighty. Excellent. So to make this work properly, um, with my fingers crossed, because it's it worked previous in test, but you click on your character token, uh -huh. and then you should have in the upper left hand corner a button that says like plus player skill check. Yep. Uh, now it's going to ask you two questions. Do you have any advantage dice and do you have any disadvantage dice? Uh, in this case, no, this is just a straightforward, unless you've got something for your character that if you deal with commoners, you get a bonus or anything like that. Nope. Um, then it's just going to be a straight roll. Uh, and when you click the button and click OK, it comes there. Now, uh, for your for record and for those playing along in the home game, uh, he rolls a D100. Yeah, percentile dice. He's looking to make his number or less. And uh, in this case, he rolled a 16. It's definitely less than 80. You succeed. You spend several hours digging through paperwork and you find a um, you find a map of the building. Uh, and in fact, you find information about the whole building block. I'm going to move you guys over to here. Sweet. Um, this is, I think you guys are seeing this and mm -hmm. some black screen there, but um, because you have full access, I'm going to go ahead and give you, uh, I'm just going to reveal the whole thing. Sweet. Just No, this is fine. All right. So Cotter's Jewels is located on a street in a merchant district. Um, it is a row of, of building, a row of shops with residences above. Um, to the south of it, uh, on the street, there is a, uh, a store that sells uh, custom, um, custom like uh, girdles and harnesses and like leather works. Uh, to the north of it is a uh, is a bakery shop that sold that specialized in selling just cupcakes, and it went under because who wants a shop that just sells cupcakes? Um, so it is currently an abandoned shop. The building itself has thick walls that that run between them to support the above, and it has uh, two floors above there, which contain for for residences. So it's a three story structure. Uh, in this row of houses. It backs onto an alleyway. The row of buildings behind the alley are, are all like six story tall with pitched, heavy pitched roofs. Um, and it's, and it's uh, actually a fairly decent way from a nearby bridge, which goes with a nearby canal. Um, this particular merchant district is a little bit nicer than some of the others and it's got uh, trees on the street. Isn't that nice? How pleasant. Cool, all right. And now you have a pretty good uh, lineup. Actually, let me show you the other floors. They're off to the right. Um, those are the second, and then below that are the third floors of the building. Cool. Yes. There you go. And that's it for me, right? Like, and that's um, it for you. That's it. That's what so I get. next, okay. next leg work scene. For my legwork scene, do you want me to go to the party or do you want me to go into the merchant shop and see where they hide? Um, that they sounded hide? like a question that I would ask you. I was asking oh. the group. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Follow your heart. If you're going to go into the <laughs> shop, I, I don't mind helping you if I need to be stealthy in... Yeah, I can cause it. Yeah, I can cause a distraction and change my appearance. So yeah, that'll work. Do you want to come with me? Absolutely. Okay. So, um, so you guys head down to the shop now that you've an information about where it is and how it goes. Um, yeah. The the whole scene is sort of abstracted, so it's presumed that you guys get a chance to like talk to each other in between scenes, and this can take place at various times of day. Um. Uh, uh, this game, this can take place at very times of day, so it could be taking place in the early morning, like maybe before the shop just opened, or the late afternoon, or lunchtime, or whatnot. 
probably um, the late afternoon and i'm just gonna disguise myself as a merchant noble okay all right um and what are you hoping to get out of this scene are you just gonna try to case it and get a feeling for it or do you have something specific that you're looking for um so i'm gonna try and convince him and read his emotions to figure out um like where he keeps it um and how guarded it uh it is okay well um i'll give you some information going in yep um so first off oh she's big Uh, there is a um, there is a uh, an assistant who works the storefront um, named um, who introduces herself as Garnet, and there are um, sitting around in the room um, two private security guards um, just in the room here. One of them standing by this back door and staircase, which is roped off. Um, you know that the staircase leads up to uh, the upper floors where the residences are. And one is just inconspicuously standing over here by the door in a very conspicuous manner. Um, Cotter's Jewels is a jewelry shop that specializes in, um, in like custom art designs. It's not so much, le it's less likely to jewels and more likely like to have like necklaces and earrings and more likely to have art pieces and statues that feature valuable jewels. Um, the uh, um, gutting in there, you ask about, um, you ask about uh, Cotter himself and Garnet very pleasantly tells you he's unfortunately really busy with uh, working on a special uh, special for the uh, tea for a client and he's not able to come out and to see you um, if you want to make an appointment for next week um, he should be able to have time then if you if you want to meet with him I'm really really sorry she seems really sincere or at least really well practiced at her job of sounding very sincere um so can I try and read her emotions to see how sincere she actually is um yeah, I mean, she's she looks she's working in a high end merchant shop and has been told that nobody bothers the boss. You get that out of it. I, I'm not going to make you make a roll for that. You read her okay. emotions. She's, um, you know, she doesn't want to lose a sale because she feels vested in the in the company, but is not or in the business, but is not, uh, but is not a, a on. A, Words have just failed me. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's okay. Can I try and convince her to let me, to let us go in and see her because it's of an urgent matter? Um, yes. Um, this is, okay, this is Cordelia. Who else came with you? I did. Uh, William. William. Apologize, I don't have your characters by voice yet. All right. Um, so you can go in there and um, you can go ahead and attempt to do this. Yep. Um, now, note that you were trying to do this kind of work at the place where uh, um, at the place where uh, you're planning to do this job. So this is actually quite risky. Um, so what I'm going to want you to do is I'm going to want you to make a, some sort of convince somebody role. Um, mm -hmm. in fact, convince somebody might be your skill. Yeah. It um, is. yeah. I'm going to give you two disadvantage dice on this disadvantage okay. dice. Don't mean that, that it, you won't succeed. It just means that something bad might happen. Um, and if you've got any reason that you might have advantage dice, you can go on that. Now William's um, with you. He might be able yeah. to provide you with some sort of cover. Um, I am uh, or maybe some way to assist you in this case. Um, 
Uh, I'm trying to think of what I could do. I was planning on sneaking around, but that's okay. I'll, I definitely want to help you out. Uh, I mean, if you want to call this your legwork scene too, and you do a sneak around yeah. while while she's on that. Yeah, if nothing else, she's probably present at the same time. Yeah. I would definitely. Um, like that might yeah. that actually might help too. Uh, yeah. The session is short, so we we do have a bit of time crunch. So let's call this your legwork scene as well. Sure. Um, so maybe you are not with her if you're going to be sneaking around because getting in the front door is maybe not the best way. Um, or maybe it is, and you just plan on going by while they're not paying attention. If if she's causing, because I know you were saying that you wanted to cause a distraction, and yeah. so I'd love to. If she's causing a distraction, I would love to use that to sneak sneak around. But I'm okay. I'm also close to going through the back. One second. I had to turn the fan on. All right. Um, now you know that the back there's an alleyway that runs behind the building, and there are um, there are metal doors that are are locked that are like emergency exit kind of kind of thing. Uh, oh. Getting in the back may be trickier than uh, than you want, but um, mm. let's hope. go ahead. Let's go ahead and, and take Cordelia's role first. Cordelia, you are trying to convince her, and you're taking a two point disadvantage two dice disadvantage on this. So when it asks you for disadvantage dice, you say two. Where does it say that? Uh, when you click on your character. Um, I'll take your 16, but if you click on your character token, in the upper left corner, there's a button that appears that says like, uh, that says uh, PC skill check. Uh, I can't even see my token. I put these on the wrong thing. You should see them there in the middle of Cotter's Jewels. I'm just zooming in. Sorry. It's in the blue area on the map yeah. there. Okay. So I clicked on it and then. And then in the upper left hand corner, do you see the button? That says BC. Yep. Skill check. Yep. And you click that. Yeah. And, and then, then as you advantage and you have none and disadvantage, you have two. Challenge dice zero. Challenge dice. Challenge dice. Ah. Okay. So um, no no problems. Uh, you're able to talk her into it. And she says, okay, look, you've got a... I I'll let you go back there and I'll let you see him real briefly. But um, he's really, really busy. We really can't disturb him. And so, um, but if you want to just... Yeah, just come with me. And so sh you convince her to come back and... Uh, and they open up the back room here, and there are. Um, first thing you notice is there are two guards in here. Um, that are by. Um, that are uh, House Silver Tree guards, and you also spot another woman who is just sort of hanging out in there. Um, mm -hmm. She is dressed in armor, um, which is. As I meant, uh, as, which as you can imagine for a Renaissance setting is kind of unusual. She's has the mark of House Silver Tree on her, uh, and then there he is in the corner, um, working variously on the flower, which is currently kept in what looks to be a bell jar, um, on his shelf while he is working on the glass flower directly in front of it. Um, the bell jar being like a foot tall glass thing attached to a base. It looks easily move maneuverable. Um, and when you get in there, the uh, the woman the steps up. She is real tall. Um, mm -hmm. it, blonde hair. If this was a movie, she, Gwendolyn Christie would play her. Um, mm -hmm. She's uh, she's like, you know, what is it, Garnet? He's you know. We're, we're, what do we get things done here? And she's like, "Oh no, we, a potential client just wanted to see the back room. It's fine. Don't worry about it." And she backs off. It's clear that this woman is much more in charge of what's going on there. Um, more on her in a bit, but that's the information that you get from there, which is there's four people and this other woman and the where the thing is kept. I think it's pretty yeah. successful for a legwork scene there. Yes. Yeah. Um, cool. 
William is using this opportunity to break in in some way. How is William going to sneak around the place? There's a lot more people in that room than I was hoping for. Um, <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, it's uh, a pretty small room, and there's like three, four people in it. Absolutely. Um, if I am with her, I would, and and so she didn't go in the room. She no, she got the door open. open, and that's as far as you got. Gotcha. Okay. Um, is there any way? <laughs> is there any way that I could? sneak in and look around <laughs> this would be pretty epic for you to be able to pull that off that's what i figured um i would give you a lot of disadvantage dice and if any of them came up bad it would be very bad for you sure sure um, no no that's okay I, I kind of figured uh but yeah. you could potentially uh with a sneak around check i would say that you might be able to slip up the stairs and be able to check out what's on the upper floors okay um, of the building if that's something that you would want to do that i rather do at least we can if it's okay eliminate some rooms so, so yes, i am because this is a dangerous thing because you're living at the location i'm going to give you two disadvantage dice oh. um but this would be a sneak around check unless you've got something better i also i don't know if this is going to make a difference but i have two advantage dice when it comes to being sneaky that absolutely makes a difference. So when you come to rolling dice, you will roll your two advantage dice as well. Okay, so I roll two disadvantage. Two, and yeah, two advantage and two challenge, yeah. That sounds ridiculously fun. Okay. Um, and then you asked, you asked me something else, and I think I may have missed it. Sneak around, unless you've got something else. Okay. So you're going to click your character, click click the roll, and you're doing this as a sneak around check unless you have a, another kind of skill that you think is more appropriate. Okay, no, yeah, it would be sneak around. Okay. Um, okay, and I just put the percentage in. Uh, no, you click on the, you click on your character, click the button, and then ask you how many advantage and how many challenge dice you've got, and then it will roll it for you. And then we have to manually compare that to your actual skill. Gotcha. Over. Okay. And the challenge dice is a disadvantage. Uh, yes. Okay, so two of you. The game calls them challenge dice, um, but D and D has corrupted me to call them disadvantage dice. <laughs> That's cool. All right. So you succeeded at the check uh, with an eight, because that's definitely good enough. And then for boons and complications, uh, you got. Um, one of the dice came up with a um, uh, one of the dice, the boon dice came up good, and one of the challenge dice came up bad, and they canceled each other out. So there's no real problem with that. Um, you sneak around upstairs, and that you find that there are, um, if you look off to the upper to the right here, um, there is a break room, um, and there are uh, there are four additional guards sleeping in the second floor well two of them are sleeping and the two of them are very clearly off duty there um you don't disturb them and you do manage to make it up to the top floor where you're able to look around now there's two things that you find up here um one in cotter's bedroom which is in the back of the top floor um there is a safe um laid out there and um another thing is there is a dog who is uh, currently sleeping, but is not, uh, uh, and so you managed to not disturb because you succeeded your tech, but could prove to be a problem if you were sneaking around here at a later point. Sure, sure. Does the dog count towards the body count? <laughs> I bet that's something that- I'm not gonna Butcher answer that question because I don't want to get into trouble with certain people. Fair. All right, I bet I bet Lady What's Her Face cares about the dog. We won't kill the dog. That's fine. I'd say right. John Wick would say yes. Okay. Okay. Um, there you go. So uh, that was two more legwork scenes done. Who else has a legwork scene that they need or want to perform? 
Um, I'm just going to go to that, like, leather work shop mm -hmm. and do my little gossip with merchants thing. Okay. Um, I'm just going to try to get, you know, in, like, a very roundabout way the patterns and personalities of, like, everybody in the shop next door. Um, like, is are all these people always there all the time like do the guards go sure. out do they like no, to make, drink like that does... makes perfect sense this seems fairly straightforward um this sounds like a gossip with commoners or gossip with merchants uh, if you've uh, either one of those i'll take it yep i have gossip with merchants okay and so just go ahead and do the gossip with merchants all right let's have the zoom back in let me switch scenes here I am. Uh, I Although, no actually, message. didn't you already have a legwork scene where you got the plans, or was I mistaking that with somebody else? No, was... I didn't. That was them. Oh. It was me. I got the floor plans. Ah, okay, you got the plans. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Go on, carry on. Yeah. Um, I don't have advantage, right? No, unless Just you've got some run. reason why you have advantage. I don't think you you do. Okay, okay. No challenge. Here we go. Fifty-three. Okay. Um. Do you have? Yeah, you'll have to check your your character sheet or your uh, specialty sheet. Uh, what your skill is with gossip with merchants or gossip with commoners? Eighty percent. So no problem. So you go in there and you you talk to the uh, you talk to the guy who's working. He's uh he's pretty young, but he's uh he's affable, and you're able to to chat him up. Um, he mentions that um, this last week there's been a lot more security there. Now, it's not uncommon for Cotter to basically live at the shop, right? He works all day, he sleeps all night, he goes out occasionally. Um, the girl goes home um, at night, um, but in this last week, there's basically always like eight guards there, and then there's the tall, blonde, armored lady from House Silver Tree who's there during the daytime most of the time. And then she comes and visits once or twice at night, usually about seven and about nine, give or take, just to just to make sure that the guards are not like slacking off and drinking or whatnot. Um, oh, I also had another bit of information here because we have a member of the circle who knows about, um, who knows about this. Um, that woman, uh, Kiata Vostov, is um house silver tree guard and she was a former member of the circle um until she found it was more profitable to go straight um she's pretty good uh in a fight she's real tough real real strong and quick with a uh, quick with a broadsword um and uh she also has um she's also particularly good at at spotting misdirection just to be aware on that point. Um, I forgot about that because that's a thing that you would know about once you get introduced to the character because you've a member of the circle. Cool. Okay. Your job here is done. Your job here is done. All right. Who else has a has a uh, legwork scene to do? Uh, I've got one. Um... I'm, I'm thinking that what I would be wanting to do is actually um, go in to the shop uh, individually at one point during the day and uh, speak to the highest. So I, I think that we had who was who who runs the front, the, the shopkeep Gar Garnet runs the front. Oh, I can actually make these visible to you guys. If, if your name is Garnet, you basically have to work at a place like this, right? Like yeah. she, was, she was faded. All right, there's Garnet. Um, Perfect. Perfect. And then uh, this is just the quickest and easiest way to make these. That's Vatia Kostov using some art I've got from another part. And then uh, Gelfrin Cutter. Uh, there was one other bit of information I missed earlier. Um, the uh on the this is what i get for not checking my notes um in the back 
of the shop, there is a um, a large walk-in safe. It is built into the wall and has a very a very large and sort of complicated uh, mechanism on it, which uh, which is a Sterling brand safe. Does anybody know anything about security systems? I think that's typically a thief function, but no, that's that's fine too. And there we go. There's the last character. And all right, so I've made all of these uh, visible to you, so that you guys can look under the orca job and see all the different characters that you have run into so far. Foof. Justice for foof. Okay. So, so. Um, I, I I would like to come in and uh, present myself as obviously a, a member of the uh, Vesper family. Um, so I've I come in. Uh, I have jewels that I would like to pawn, and I would like to kind of engage in a discussion of. Um, I've got some things that I would like to exchange with you. I've got some things I'd like to buy from you, but I've got a small package that's going to be delivered here soon that's coming off of a ship from the docks. Um, and I want to know a good time that I might be able to have that delivered here and to have it uh, here for safekeeping. Do you have a place if I was to, because I, I trust you, I've heard great things about your shop, um, and I want to make sure that if I have some jewels that are coming in, from an overseas uh, shipment that I could get them taken care of here. And it would be a small box, just yeah. maybe about one foot by one foot. So you are, uh, the goal of what you're trying to get out of the scene is you're trying to plant the idea that you are, um, that uh, that a shipment is going to arrive and they should expect it and, and receive it. In, in about, right, in about a day, in about a day. And I want to make sure that, you know, nothing happens to it. It's a very expensive piece of jewelry coming in uh, for the Vesper family. And uh, again, we typically have well, jewelers. The, yeah. Also, to be, to be clear on this one, in case anybody gets confused, the Vespers is the criminal organization that typically preys upon nobles. And they're not specifically a family, just to let you know, that not, not like, not like Silver Tree or, uh, or Dayweather, who are, who are the, the the noble houses that you've dealt with so far in this adventure? Okay. Just okay. just just to be clear on that one, because so, we're getting don't want to make terminology mixed up. Perfect. Um, so yes, that's 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 what uh, as far as legwork that this scene it would be about for me trying to get uh, a box uh, shipment that they would be expecting that they would receive and that they would bring in and maybe even place in a safe for me. Okay. Um, so because it's a location, I think that this is going to be particularly dangerous. So I'm going to give you two challenge dice just off. Because this is the second job that, or second time that somebody's come in there um, shiftily asking stuff, I'm going to actually throw another die on there as well for as a challenge dice. And then um, this would have to be require you to make some sort of uh, convince like a power like a, a strong convince somebody role i would think do you have a particular skill that you had in mind for this one um i did uh let me see here so is and gesper is not considered noble is he are there any nobles within the uh the shop Otter, nobody working the shop is considered to be nobles okay uh Cotter's jewels works with is a uh, silver trees like personal jeweler, um, which you've got that. I believe I gave you that information earlier. Um, but nobody in here is a noble. It's all commoners and merchant types. Okay. Um. So let me see here. So as a skill set, so would I would this be considered lying to somebody or? Um... Yeah, that would make sense. Okay. So you're, let, you're weaving a web of lies um, and planning the idea that this package will arrive and that they should accept it. Right. And uh, at one point, the concealing of that object, um, would that would be something for down the line. That's, That's a later problem. Yeah. That's a problem, okay. a problem for future Morgan. Okay. So click on my...
token and then click the button in the upper left. Okay. And then three challenge dice or disadvantage dice. And do I put minus, minus three? Uh, no, you use a positive number. It's fine. Okay. Okay. And where do I go to roll? Uh, once you've clicked the okay, it'll ask you how many advantage and then how many challenge. And then once you click that okay, it just does it. Sorry, I'm having some difficulty here. So in the red box, in the red circle, I've got a three. Uh, I've got a one in the blue, and then I've got a, a hundred in the green. Uh, you're not clicking on the right thing. Uh, okay. When you click on it, there's a square button that appears in the top left corner next to the little toolbar you've got in the top left corner. Okay. And it says PC uh, PC skill check. Okay, there it is. And then when you click that button, it oh, then God. asks you to... Okay, and then three there. Yep. Okay. There you go. All right. So the you got a 39, which is definitely successful. And so the idea is well seated. And you get um and you get a uh, a boon for that. Um so when you notes here so as you are um as you were talking about laying this in here she tells you that um you know she's she tells you that it's not really great that you're, you're delivering it now but she under, but you she understands that you know certain things can't wait and they'll be happy to receive it for you uh they'll forego the deposit because you seem a fine outstanding individual um and uh um, she, hang on a second. Um, and in addition to, in addition to that, she says that, uh, um, the, uh, that they will, it, that they will take any sort of special precautions you want with this package, including storing it in their, their secure vault. Um, and, uh, you also get, um, like the keys, like she moves, she opens up like a cabinet and go fiddles through there and like leaves the keys right on the counter, which is not like for the shop to get in, which is not very difficult for you at all to just palm. Sweet. So I presume Perfect. that you just do that. So you Absolutely. have you now have keys to the shops. So you don't have to break in if you come in at night. Perfect. Yes. So that was the thing. Now uh, Takashi, the last one, I believe, with a to do a, a um uh, to do a legwork scene. Yeah. Um. So what I was thinking of doing um was going going down to the docks. Mm -hmm. and trying to figure out if they where this orchid came from what what other like if there's like a distributor or company that might have like moved it here um okay. any information about the orchid itself okay um, so you're, yeah. you're looking to get information what do you hope to find um i I'm mostly just hoping for information at this point. I'm hoping to get like some kind of um because everyone's doing everything um in terms of figuring out a layout to the plans, a layout to like I'm trying mm -hmm. to figure out if there's like another orchid we could get. Yeah, if there's a switcheroo potential or like a, yeah. a less good flower. Or even some way yeah. or even some way of me if things don't go right. Okay. We could get another orchid and trick our original person who hired us into thinking we got the right one and we actually swapped hers with like some kind of swap a root thing. Some backup plan basically. Okay. 
So um, who do you go, who do you think would be the person you would talk to down there? Who's, who's your guy? Who's the one that you, that, that would be able to get you that information about rare orchids coming in? Because that would be, that would definitely be noteworthy and you would know somebody. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say I got a guy in like, who knows about the, you know how there's like the, what is it? There's always somebody who, if they, if they run the docks, especially mm -hmm. since I'm a yeah. town, town. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for a name. Like, yeah. who, who is uh, this person that you know? We're going to call him, we're going to call him, um, Lioness. All right. All right. And, uh, Lioness is, it, you, you go down and you talk to Lioness and you're like, hey, and you know, you chat him up. Um, and it sounds like you were going to try to, to just gossip with commoners on this. Yeah. Okay. Um. Do you have any sort of bonuses to uh, to doing this kind of a role? Um, let's see here. All I know is I know things about the docks, the docks ship and sailing. Um, I don't know if I know anything about. I don't know if I have any bonuses. Where I would I know. find? Where would it I would find? It would be under bonuses? your cartel might have them. Red Lotus Society think it's benefits for dealing with the docks. Um. Mm. Maybe not, but you're not conspicuous down there. Yeah, I'm not conspicuous at the docks. But I'll, I'll tell you what, um, because this is uh, something that would be imported from Tau, uh, to, from Teona, and it would be a thing you'd know, the lioness would be Taoese and would also have that, uh, you'd have that connection there. So I'm going to give you one advantage dice on this. Okay. Um, so go ahead and gossip with commoners and take a one advantage dice. My goss, oh shoot, I don't have a... Uh, uh... I just have anything else. So I have fifty percent. Any, anything else? Anything else is a is a way to work it. All right, let's see. It's a fifty-fifty. Um, where do I roll this? Is this? Click on, on your okay. character token. Click on the button that appears in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, PC skill check. All right, and then I get one advantage dice. And you get one advantage dice. Okay. Zero challenge dice. So, um, so yeah, you talk to Linus. Lioness tells you that um, it was a pretty rare find that comes in. They, they do import some of these, and um, they actually are expecting one in, uh, not this particular kind, because these flowers are all very different from each other. Um, but um, but they got a pretty good look at it, and, and there's another one that's going to be similar uh, that's not quite as rare and valuable that's coming in, in um, just this evening. Um, and that he would be able to potentially let it go uh, for, you know, he knows the guy who's buying it, so you might be able to work out something on that. Um, but specifically, the last one that came in um, was known at what is is a very uh, is a very specific and known one. So, right. the, so swapping it would probably not be a good idea. Swapping it would not necessarily, swapping it would not work for your, for your, um, your contact. Um, it might work for Lady Silvertree because this other one that's coming in looks very similar to them. But but somebody who's in the know would know. Okay. All right. Um, and so we could trick you know Lady that, Silvertree. Yeah, and you know Lady sure. Delweather, Dayweather, who who is your patron for this mission, um, given given the status of her gardens and how much flowers she had, you suspect you wouldn't be able to trick her, but you might be able to trick uh, Lady Silvertree. And, um, and you know, he'd be, able, he'd be willing to let it, you know, let it go for not a lot of money. Um, that On that point, you have a couple ways which you could get it from him. Uh, you could spend influence uh, is one of the things you could do to just represent wealth and you could just buy it off of this guy or potentially doing a legwork scene you could steal it from him who knows mm -hmm. maybe something i might ask another party member to do or so we are down to the end of um end of the night or end of the day the sun sets over over the city and uh um and we are back into picking up 
what our next um, what our next uh, scenes will be for the next day. Um, did anybody perform uh, legwork in a place that they were conspicuous? I don't think so. I, did, I should have asked on each scene, but I don't it, think says, so. it says that I'm conspicuous in all. I think it says all regions during the day. I know we were there late afternoon. Yeah, so you were there during the day. So I'm going to go ahead and add um, eight total heat. Um, six because you guys are on a new day and two because you were conspicuous in that one scene. I was conspicuous in um, merchant and noble scenes. So. Okay, so that was another two heat. All right. Um but with um when i was with william mm -hmm. i have a distraction so my crew members don't generate heat for being conspicuous in scenes excellent well then i will take two heat off there you go nice so this put us back into the planning phase so now you guys have a choice you can perform another round of legwork scenes if you feel there's more information you need you could do um, another planning phase if you want to really work out what your plan is. Uh, or you, if you want to go for it, you can go for it. I, I can use an influence to, like I was saying earlier, have people on the rooftops or place people on the rooftops and have us give us like signals while we're doing this. Is, is the influence just one per person or is Every it like Everybody has a single influence, uh, and there's one influence that can be shared by the table. Are we are we going to run out of time if we do a planning and then a legwork? You won't is have that... time for a legwork. Okay, so, we have one uh, more essentially. It, we it is Friday this. night now, so if you do a planning <laughs> now, then then we'll do a planning now, and actually, uh, and then then tomorrow basically is the last segment you've got because it's after in afternoon it leaves, so you won't have time to do legwork beforehand. Um, so so if you've got both... more legwork you need to do, do it now. So um, we can't both plan and nab the flower is what you're saying. Correct. The the the, the spare flower. Um, you could, uh, I, as I mentioned before, that is a thing that Takashi or potentially your table influence could do is spend an influence and you just get the spare flower. Oh, oh okay, cool, cool. Because it represents money and it represents influence in your cartel and you're just like, hey, I need to buy this flower. I need somebody to go over there and get it for me. And that's kind of what it is. Um, right. Right. You have a bunch of other things that you can spend influence on, but there's sort of general gist of stuff. Also, uh, if you have a legwork scene that you've got planned out that you think that your cartel could handle for you, you could spend an influence to have your cartel handle a, a legwork scene for you. And you could do that like, like basically at any time. If, if you needed to have a legwork done tomorrow morning, but for go time, you could do that by Bye. spending influence. Because I feel like we've got all the puzzle pieces of a really bomb ass plan here, but we've got to like figure out how to put it together. And I don't know if we can I'm, do that with that. I'm going to suggest that you guys take another planning scene. Yeah, um, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like we've got really cool stuff here, but I think we need to talk it talk it out and figure out okay. how we're going to use it all. All right, then then um, I will put you in get the planning music going. Um, now, where are you doing this planning scene? Um, you could do it in a variety of places, but there's always a chance that law-abiding citizens will just happen to wander in on you. We can do it in my safe house, and I can spend my influence to do that. Okay. Do you want to tell us about your safe house? Um, it's in a inn for the duration of the job. Okay. Um, just a regular inn that, uh, reg that we do performances at. Okay. And it's like the green room in the back of the inn. No performances. Yeah. No performances today. Not since the fire. Yeah. All right. Um, because this is a, a scene taking, a, a planning scene taking place at a place that you've not done it before. And it's, you know, the back of a, the back of a, of an inn where fire has been taking place and, and you've got props and, and other things there. Um, I'm going to give you guys one influence for the table. So you now have two table influence that you can spend on things. Um, 
and because of the time crunch, I am actually going to shorten this time to this planning scene to just 10 minutes. So um, go. Yeah. Uh, it, it seems to me that the main uh, the main thing we're going to have to do is deal with uh, Katya Vostov, right? Like she's going to be there. It's going to be tomorrow morning. Um, since her uh, deal is that she's she's kind of key to distractions, I wonder if there's a thing that we can do where uh, we make it look like we've bungled the job, right? Like we make it seem like, oh, she caught us, whatever, but but somehow we've slipped in a flower switch behind her. So she thinks she's chased us off, but really we've swapped out the real flower for the fake one that, um, that Takashi has, has found. I don't know what the mechanics of that are, but that's kind of what I'm thinking about right now. A 5D chess play. You've caught me, but you haven't caught me. Um, and I can do just, dis- I can make disguises for everyone create a disguise for everyone. So then it's not our real identities. Yes. I was I was thinking that inside of this box that they would have initially had by now, it's going to have enough of these little uh, poison packets that we'll be able to open it up and use it at our discretion. So you'll each be able to take one, uh, throw it inside of the room, put your mask on, and then be able to uh, have incapacitated individuals available. So we should have more than enough poison to go around uh, for whoever's inside of the room. Sounds like you're spending your planning f- scene making more of this poison. Uh, it would have it would have come as, yes, as, yes as your poison as your as your planning scene poisoner function. That's what you're doing for this planning scene. You're making an extra big dose so everyone's can have have them. That's right. Like I said, I would use my influence to have my cartel just out there, just calling the shots, whatever they can see in windows, any guards coming up, um, relaying any you know messages to the entire team, um, learning certain signals. Like that's what I would like to use. Okay. So. Cool. All right. So you 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 talk to uh, you talk to your guys and and say, hey, I need people on scene here to to call call the shots. If we wait until after nine, we won't have to worry about that chick because she comes, she like leaves and then comes back at like seven and comes back at nine to check on the guards. So if we that's wait until- in the evening, in the evening during the day, she's there the whole day. Yeah, but like, are I we think, do, I think... is this not the evening? Like, we're, are we not planning the evening time? Right you're now? planning it. You're planning during the night. The days you're gonna have to do this during the daytime. We're taking up our night to do the planning, so it's gonna be tomorrow morning. Gotcha. Um, okay. can we can we get flipped back to the map? Sure. Thanks. And whoever wants to make entry, I've got the keys to the shop as well. So whoever wanted to breach, um, so we don't have to break the door, I've got the keys. Yeah. We do we need when you're a doing way the, into the safe? When you're doing the job, um, you can do it in the really early morning, like before the shop opens, for example, um, up to the afternoon. Cool. So, just, so far as we know, the 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 flower is sitting just on the table, right? It's not in the safe. When when you were when you got a chance to look at it, he's sitting back here on his like workbench, and the flower is basically just on the table. Right. He, it might get moved to the safe. It might get moved to anywhere. Um. So I guess we should be prepared for that. But. Um. Yeah, I mean, I guess like, what's what's what are the steps of this plan? What are we thinking for like, like who's going to be where and how we're going to like distract off very or cordon off various different guards who are going to come out for us? I can use my influence if we need to get them out of the room. I can get one of my performers um, to do some street performance outside. Not sure how that'll help. I could help with a escape plan. So if there's like a shit ton of people outside, just I guess that depends though. If at nighttime, would there be a big enough crowd for that? But it's gonna be tomorrow morning, right? Yeah, this 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 plan is gonna have to take place in the daytime. Okay, it has to take place. Whole daytime. daytime robbery. Okay. Classic. Okay, so then yeah, if there's like a giant squad of people performing and drawing a huge crowd, we could blend into the crowd, right, to run away. Yeah, uh, so 
at which point the, the keys aren't going to be super necessary necessarily because uh, the shop will be open. I'm wondering if there's a way that we can like draw off some of the guards before we try to like breach into the back room, essentially. I mean, isn't that what the poison's supposed to be for? To like incapacitate them? Oh, is, is, is the idea that we're just going to come in and like drop poison, drop poison, just like take out everyone with the poison and, and, and go with, go that way? I dig it. Seems I think easy. so. Yeah. Then I can spend influence to get explosives. So we can explode the, the what is it, the um, the safe if there's the, the flowers in there. I think explosives are a good idea. There's no there's no bad yeah. time for explosives. There's never, there's never a bad time for explosions, yeah. Right. At the very least, if we need to have a different escape plan, we can go out the back door. Uh, I guess you can just open it. Um, or even a different entry plan. Yeah. We have multiple entries. I can spend an influence to put some of my circle bruisers around, um, like, outside. So this way, like, nobody comes into the jewelry store, like, What's going on? What is uh? What is this area back here? Alleyway. It's the alleyway behind the buildings. Oh, it's an alleyway. Okay. Yeah, it's a uh, real narrow. Uh, just just like ten feet across. Have we checked the alleyway? Yeah, you went down the alleyway. Presumably, you went down the alleyway at some point in time. It's just okay. it's a it's a dark alley. It opens on both ends. It's straight and. Uh, Well, I, I think that I could definitely be one of those that are uh, in there. It would make sense for me to be in there. I'd be waiting for my package. Uh, so it that wouldn't be too conspicuous for me to already be in there. I can conceal one of my um, gas masks, maybe under kind of a larger robe. Uh, so I'm inside of there waiting for my package. Uh, once the package arrives, uh, maybe if one of you want to come in as the courier, like to drop off the package, that would really help and there would be already two of us in there i can do that because i can do disguises nice i, I want to set up the possibility of um of like just having an explosion like maybe using the bomb like using a bomb or something like it at this door just to um uh uh if something goes wrong distract people maybe it's not a bomb but it's like just in case this there's a problem i like to have like a fail safe in there uh I could alternatively use an influence to have a member of my cartel set off fireworks to cover noise. Cool. That's something we need to do. So we can mask the explosion as fireworks. Right. So that takes down its um, distract. I mean, depends on what we're using the explosion for. If the explosion is to distract, I mean, the fireworks, I guess, would just distract themselves. Yeah. All right, you guys have about a couple minutes left. Um, okay, so who wants to be the person who can pretend to be the courier? I'll do that. Okay. I'll disguise myself as one. Yeah, so the two of you are in the shop. Um, where's, where, where are other people stationing themselves? I know, um, Michael, you said that you were going to be kind of like... Uh, 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 <laughs> taking the bird's eye view. Exactly. So if there's anything that I need to like signal to anybody to warn and, you know, if any emergencies, if I need to take out people from afar or, you know, I want to be on the outside while somebody's going in just to kind of have that added support. You guys can also uh, put your character's tokens on the map. You can grab them with the clicker button and drag them to where you think that you're going to be at the start of this event. Cool. We could also walk into the shop and be like, this is a fucking robber. <laughs> and then take a hostage <laughs> and take and take Morgan as a hostage. Like this is a hostage situation now. I think I think we've got multiple overlapping plans right now. If you move and execute um, one of you. I imagine I'll just be out in the street somewhere keeping an eye out. Uh I'm shit for combat skills, so uh I'm not gonna be able to help if any like push comes to shove in here. Mm. And then Takashi and William are um, on the 
on the street or situated on roofs or across the street, various buildings? Yeah, so I was, I was trying to figure out <laughs> what would count as a building from afar. Just half, was a, covered, there was like half a covered by the uh, by the black is well, I can call that as as in or on a nearby building. Um, I can also produce a hearse as a getaway, getaway vehicle, uh, if, if such a thing is is desirable. All right. Any um, so at this point in time, before this is the point in time where you're going to need to spend any of that influence you've got because you won't be able to be like mid time and phone you know phone up your buddies to to show up. So um, we have. Um, we have currently a bunch of lookouts um, coming in. Uh, these are wardens of the night lookouts that will help be helping you out with um, um, with various uh, uh, just just keeping an eye on the street. Correct. And who else? Uh, what else do we have influence being spent on? Um, my my bruisers will be kind of like around like where the trees are. Okay. And then we're getting some lot of bruisers. Yeah, I'll 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 call on a hearse. Never hurts to have a vehicle handy. Okay. So, I believe everyone should have had their uh uh, deducted out their um, influence. Is anybody else spending any influence before this uh, uh, before this situation goes? Uh, I'm spending mine on yes. Which one do we want? Do we want the explosive? Don't forget that there's also two influence that you can spend from the table. Anybody can spend that um, outside of your own personal. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could use your influence for the explosive, and if we if we think that a swap flower would be helpful, we can we can spend one of the table influence on the swap flower. Okay. I don't know that we're necessarily trying to conceal this crime though, so I don't know if the swap flower is necessarily helpful. Yeah, probably not. Like we're going in pretty aggro here. All right. There's one. Do we don't have time for another legwork thing, right? No, it no. is now. Um. It is now daytime. Uh, you guys had, or mid morning, you're coming in there. Morgan and uh, set up already. Cordelia is coming in with a with a package to be the delivery. Um, we are now going into what is called a drama scene, uh, and drama scenes are similar to legwork scenes, only they're much more like the traditional role playing game. We will be playing out, um, playing this out, and you guys may engage in combat. Um, I really like the combat in this system because the way it works is that everybody has 100 points of luck, which hasn't come up to this point, but these are sort of like your hit points. Um, also, and certain, like, specifically name foe enemies typically have luck. Uh, minions follow a different set of rules, but it falls on the same point that if you're going to engage in combat, you are going to roll a skill check against whichever skill you happen to be using against them. Now, they fall into violence and talking. If you're using a social skill of some sort, uh, it can be basically anything. You can use bureaucracy as a social skill. Uh, you could use uh, you could use gossip as a social skill, and these can be attacks that can drain the target of their luck points. Um, if your luck runs out, and if you're being socially attacked, you'll acquiesce to whatever it is that that they want to do. If it's uh, violence that you're using, um, then. Um, then you will have uh, uh, then then you will start doing actual damage to the enemies, and when it gets into combat there, um, and literally anything can be uh, an attack skill, um, but if you're a social skill, you have to try different tactics because usually one tactic will only work once on a particular person. So um, we're gonna set the scene here, and I think I want to put you all on some sort of an initiative so we can roll down there and keep everybody giving everybody a chance to to do stuff i will jump in with the characters uh, possibly between between multiple characters on that so let's go ahead and 
bring up the initiative here. I am only adding an initiative on basis of how close you are to to where action is going to be taking place. Can I move myself? I'd actually like to be closer. Yeah, you can move yourself. You should be able to just click on your character token and just drag it. So you're just outside. Yeah, it's gonna. Okay. Lounging around, trying to look inconspicuous. Um, so, um, and probably not succeeding at that. So we're probably gonna go not. through here, Morgan. You're in the you're in the shop. You're sitting around waiting. At this point in time, Cordelia comes in carrying a small box. Take the scene. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. I'm so thankful it's finally here. Uh, please grab uh, Gelfin from the back. I would love him. He's the only one that can open this. Uh, we want to open it up here on the table. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to, to do that. Like, this is a really busy time. He's just finishing up this uh, this big project, and it really can't wait. Last time I tried to interrupt him for any reason, I got yelled at. Please, please don't let me do that. So uh, you're going to need to make an attack against her to see if she's willing to react to act risk your request. Well, so um, I so I have uh, as influence, I can um, let me see uh, arrange an impromptu. Sorry, hold on. Receive an introduction to the merchant uh, in a way that doesn't arouse suspicion. So you actually did that already through a legwork scene and earlier on. Oh, okay. Okay. So this and, is, and as I mentioned before, influence is not something that you could just spend willy nilly, like uh, during the drama scene. If you want to have something, you got to spend it beforehand. It's okay. gotta be because, because you gotta, you gotta leverage contacts. You gotta talk to people and they have to talk to people and they gotta take time moving stuff, which is why okay. I wanted to get all that influence purchasing out of the way here. But gotcha. Uh, but you could maybe convince her through por force of personality to maybe this time go ahead and help. But this is, will be an actual attack. You're gonna, you are, you are going to make a skill check. Uh, which skill are, I would say, convince somebody. Um, but you may have a different function in there that you want to uh, to use against her. Uh, just uh, say he's. Uh... She's not willing to do what you want, but you are you are putting social pressure on on her to do it. Right. So I'm trying. Uh, would that be more like sizing someone up? Not in this case. No. This is going to be like convince somebody, goad somebody, intimidate somebody. The depending upon what you're trying. Uh, I would even accept gossip with with merchants, depending upon what technique you're using. You always have anything else if you if you don't have the skill. Okay. Um, um, so, uh, yeah, the only, I guess, the thing that I would think of in this moment would be that when I was here yesterday, we had an understanding. And as that understanding was that I was not going to be, uh, I mean... I can always just, if you're interested in losing money for this shop, I will be happy to take my business elsewhere. But we had uh, come to an agreement. Gelfin knows I'm I'm coming. It's it's important that he's the one that's out here to see the box. Okay, so you are intimidating her? Or, or uh, what skill are you using in this case? Um, I, I think that it would probably have to be intimidation, yeah. Sure, that sounds right. So go ahead and, and roll your skill check just the same way you normally would. Um, <coughs> I'm going to give you an advantage dice on this particular case because you have uh, because you did previously set this up and you did have this whole legwork scene already spent. And if we carry our way to victory, I'm not going to know how I feel about this. Okay, so what happens is is that um, you rolled a 36, which is a success. Um, she has a small amount of luck points, and the whatever your actual roll is is what your damage is. So you do 36 points off of her luck, um, luck there. And so she's like, well, I, you know, 
I really, really can't. We've got these guards here, and they're on a time crunch, too. And, you know, if you could wait till just, like, this afternoon, we can hold it to then. And so she's not she's not going along with uh, with that. Okay, so... Um... But, but theoretically, our other person in the shop could, like, come in with another social interaction and, like, also attack her luck? Absolutely. So Cordelia happens to be right there. What are you doing, Cordelia? Um, I think she's gonna try and convince her that, like, I'm not, I can't, legally, I can't hand it over until I see um, the shopkeeper owner. Okay. That sounds very much like a bureaucracy role, but you could you could make an argument for convince somebody. I can... Or, or whatever skill you think that would be more appropriate on. But it sounds like bureaucracy or convincing. Um, I'm going to try and do convincing. Okay. I... Uh, go ahead and roll it. And I have 80% as my skill. Um, oh, you did. So, yeah. So you like, she's like, okay, fine. I get it. I understand. I totally missed the, uh, missed the, the message pop up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I get it. I get it. I understand. Hang on. I'll go back and get him. So she goes back and starts talking to, um, and, and starts talking to him. Um, and they, he comes back out and because this is a, uh, uh, because like he's left the room, uh, the uh, Katya comes out as well, and he is very annoyed, and he's like, "Who are you again? What do you? What do I need to be here for? You're just gonna open a box, Mike. I, you can leave that to my assistant." And um, you get this. He's he's annoyed, but he's just kind of like dismissive of it. But Katya comes out and she is like very carefully looking at the both of you and specifically locks eyes with Morgan. And um, and uh, she is clearly trying to get a good read on Morgan. And my dice roll was really crummy and he, she was not able to do any actual damage using size someone up as an attack. But she's like... You, you understand, you get the feeling like she's she's on to you guys. Um, Alina. Um, so since I'm like, I can see in the door yeah. from where I'm standing, I see Katja come out. And so I'm gonna like go inside and be like, oh my goodness, like we know each other, blah, blah. Um, just so like, cause I, I saw her like looking at Morgan. So just to kind of like throw her off the sense that like they can keep doing what they're doing um so i guess huh um so we are running a lot of time here so i'm gonna have to catch up if you you get two ums and then i'm going to switch to the next person yeah i just i don't know like what would apply in the situation like like now probably not navigate bureaucracy i'm not really trying to convince her of something what what was what are you attempting to do with her you're trying to distract like just her like, just like draw her attention yeah There's so specifically a distract doing. someone's skill which if Ew. you don't have it is anything else i don't have it so okay so, so anything else so just roll anything else okay all right she's aware of you coming in Um, and you're kind of pulling the eyes off of Morgan. Takashi. Um, they're, they're still in there talking. Nothing violence happening yet, but you're outside. You can see him through the window. What do you do? Is there like a hold your action for something sure. to happen? Sure. Um, just next time I call somebody out, just say, this is your coming in. Okay. Octavius. 
Yeah, also hold, or, or probably just uh, not do anything until Great. next turn. William? Uh, same, I'll hold. Morgan? Uh, lights a cigarette and takes the package from um, Cordelia. Cordelia. Yes, lights a cigarette and goes, well, this is this is what it's all about, and walks over to the... So w- let's just come do this quickly and tries to uh, get the shop over over to the table. Okay. All right. So you get him over there and keep, keep going. Yep. Keep playing so, the scene so I, as I'm smoking a cigarette, uh, which is, was the key um, for the others, as far as in the room, the, that was going to be the kind of the, the signal to get the your. Signal. Yep. Mm-hmm. And as we're opening up the uh, package, cigarettes going and there start there's a little bit of powder on the very top i pour the powder over and as i'm turning around putting on my mask throw the cigarette down and all of a sudden a puff of smoke fills the room okay um i would like you to roll this um as a use alchemical device use a chemical object if you have it um which i think bizarrely the poisoner doesn't get so if you've got a different skill like uh conceal an object or something like that so that yes I have nobody an nobody gets for... hinted on that so go ahead and do that okay um, i would like you to roll uh two complication dice because there's a lot of things i could see could possibly go wrong here okay and that's the challenge two challenge dice. yeah two challenge dice okay All right, and then you also rolled two advantage dice too. It looks like. Oh, you're... is that? So that was yeah. Sorry, I ran. I did the two. Uh... Uh, did Did you uh, do you have advantage dice for working with your own poisons? Yes, I do. Okay, so that would work out. So you're able to do this in such a way that it, um, it you the the puff goes off. It fills the room. Um, there the. Uh, Mr. Cotter is, uh, like, dives back and covers his mouth. Um, Katya is aware of these kinds of problems, and so she's a lot less, uh, a lot less uh, uh, affected by it. She's also further away. Um, Garnet just passes out on the floor, and the two guards in the room pass out on the floor as well. You also gave the signal well enough. Um, that the rest of your crew knows to put on their masks on that point. But uh, I think it's pretty clear at this point in time that this is no longer a quiet talking to part. This is now um, um, uh, this is definitely now a combat scene. Because Katya draws her sword and yells uh, scoundrels, silver tray guards to me! Uh, and takes a swing at the closest person, which is um, Elena. Are we the ones who able, uh, hold their action are able to do anything yet, or do we wait? Um, she swings and misses. Elena is definitely dodged out of the way. She's apparently being affected by the poison, and I also can't roll dice. Uh, yeah, so people holding your actions, what do you do? Go for it. All right, I'm walking into the entrance over here. I'll put, put on a mask, obviously. Yep. And I'm gonna move my way in, pull out the rifle, and just go ahead and just shoot a Katya. Okay. Okay. That's um, how we're doing this. That's how we're doing this. So go ahead and roll, um, roll your attack. I don't know if you, you don't normally get advantage for these things, but uh, do roll one disadvantage dice, and then I can also explain how weapons work because it has a different, slightly different rule. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Okay. Can I? I would like to push my luck. So that is a function that you do after you roll the dice. Ah. Uh, It changes your percentage so that if you miss, if you miss your attack, uh, uh, if you miss your attack, it does more. um, uh, 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 You you can you can modify your percentages up. Make a make a miss a hit. Okay. You said it it didn't come up. 
Yes, we have one. You're gonna roll it and roll one complication dice on there. The challenge dice, got it. One challenge dice. All right, and I have a 90, as a sharpshooter, I have a 90 to shoot somebody. Yes. So, uh, you shoot. There's a loud bang. Uh, she gets a bullet, flies into her arm, and uh, hits her armor. Now, you rolled a 42, which would normally do 42 points to her luck. Um, but because you're using a weapon, it does an extra 40 points of damage because you hit the target. Because she's actually wearing armor, she sucks some of that off. But you still did you still managed to do uh, a good chunk. Um, the bullet hits her armor and with a with a bang, deflects off and bolt bounces in the door. Um, um, Octavius, you're next in the street and holding an action. Yeah, I, I'm gonna... Ha, ha, ha. Wow. Um, are, the people, are, are the people on the street reacting in a negative way yet? Um, there... People are on the street and they have just heard a uh, a loud bang and they're starting to, a crowd is starting to gather outside. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do crowd crowd control. I'm gonna kind of uh, roll up and be like, uh, "Do not be alarmed. This is a training exercise. Uh, everything is under control here. Nothing untoward is going on. That kind of stuff." Okay. Um, so you're trying to quell the crowd here. I would like you to go ahead and roll me a check of some sort. This would most likely be like a gossip, or it may be like a. I'm better, someone? At, I'm better at convincing someone than lying to someone, so I'd like it to be that, but... Sure, uh, convince someone. Whatever, whatever makes sense. I will convince someone. No advantage, no challenge. Convinced. Okay. Um, well, that's a one. So you're successful in the check. Uh, some of the people are, are on the street are starting to wander away, but there's still a, a fairly sizable crowd here. Um, let me just grab a... Here. Grab us something for something something for a character. But don't forget my like goons are outside also making sure. Yes, your goons are outside as well. Uh, yeah. If ever it comes up, uh, you've got um. Uh, you can bring in your goons uh, when you feel it's it's appropriate. Um. So, uh, so there's the crowd. They're talking. You managed uh, to convince one person to walk away. Yay. Um, William, you're holding your action. Yes. Did I hear correctly? Did she say guards to me? Yeah. She's was shouting inside. She's talking about the the house guards inside the in, inside the place. Okay. Um, and that's, that's as you've mentioned, this they start to filter in from the uh, um, from the back door. Okay. Um, I would like to cause another distraction to try and just basically get them somewhere else or just the people and other guards trying to come in to assume that there's things happening in multiple directions. So if I could even shoot an arrow or shoot something into somebody else's window to distract them and maybe splinter them off, then I would like to try and do that. Okay, so from, from city guards, you mean? Correct. Because because she's talking about the house, the guards that are inside, the local guards. Oh, okay. Uh, but um, it's funny that you mention it. I happen to have some uh, heat here, and I'm going to go ahead and spend um, 15 of it to, uh, to add in to the scene a squad of city watchmen, which you can actually use your effect against. Okay. Then I would do that, and I don't know how, how much my influence used earlier will carry over, but if there's any way that the people that I have stationed, that I used my influence on earlier, to like signal in, like, yes. hurry, hurry up and get what you need and get out because we're being surrounded, then I would want them to send that signal, and then I would, I'll would i cause the distraction to relay the city guard somewhere else in the abandoned cupcake shop I like I'll shoot an arrow and and just make a loud noise through a window. Okay. Some... So go ahead and roll your shoot somebody shoot something check. Okay. Uh, uh, 
without any advantages on those. Yeah. Alright, uh, you can actually convince one of the city guards to investigate what's going on with a suddenly now broken window. Um, so, one of the city guards is now functionally removed from the, at least the immediate scene. Um, and your your uh, your crew that's on the lookout could be used in this particular case, because they're on the lookout for this, to provide another distraction. If you want to go ahead and expend your crew to do that, it is a check of the crew has a score of, I think, 40 on anything else. It might be 50 on anything else. It says on your card. But go ahead and make, just make the roll. All right. Uh, your crew member, one of your crew members has successfully drawn, done something suspicious enough to draw one of the guards off and will lead them away on a merry chase. So, good job. You've removed two of the Two of the guards coming in. Meanwhile, back in the combat zone, Cordelia. Um, I'm going to throw uh, to distract um the the lady, and I'm mm -hmm. gonna throw my one of my throwing knives at her. Okay, that would definitely distract her. Bleeding bleeding wounds do that to people. So uh, throw something is, is the combat skill you would use in this case? Yeah. Go ahead and roll your check. And I would like you to make a, uh, use a disadvantage, one disadvantage dice on this. All right. My something is 65%. Okay. And then the dagger does, I believe, 10%, 10 bonus damage? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you throw the dagger and it pings off of her, um, but uh, and she kind of ducks back. She's used to this kind of combat. Uh, in the process, you do manage to uh, take a uh, the the jostling of throwing around. The mask wasn't probably secured, and you end up taking a breath of the of the uh, the the air, and um, you end up taking seven whole luck off. Um, so, uh, on here I can just do it for you. Oh, you can do it for yourself. Great. Uh, you can also click on the character and then modify that it's the green number if you haven't picked that up yet. Okay. Um, the, uh, uh, Mr. Cotter is, like, yelling and demanding that you leave, and he is going to, uh, attempt to make a break for it. Um, there's clearly too many people between him and the door, so he's going to head up the stairs. Um, and he disappears up the stairs. Um, Elena. I'm going to attempt to use Run Like Hell, but I'm going to try running into the back room. Okay. Um, so let's see, run like hell is 65%. Okay, I'm going to give you three disadvantage dice to this because there are currently two guards that are coming in from that door. And so you got to get past, um, you got to get past Katya and you have to get past two guards to do it. Um, but, uh, go ahead and see if you can pull this off. This is not an actual check. So, um, you manage to get past get past Katya, but you manage you get stopped on the back on um, one of the guards coming to the door there. You knock one of them down, so he's not going to be able to perform an action. But the other one is going to to attack at you, uh, swinging a uh, um, a short uh, a short like club that he's got for for just such occasion of clubbing people. Um, he misses. Katya is also, with her broadsword, is going to swing at you. She also misses. The dice are not kind to me, as can happen sometimes. But it's good for you. Morgan. Elena's trying to get into the back room and is currently surrounded. 
uh, Morgan uh, would pick up the re the remainder of the box um, where it's again it's still pouring out smoke. Yeah, it's the and, room's filling with smoke. Right, and would throw it um, in the direction of where the guards are at the base of the stairs and where Elena is to intensify, and then would run into them. So pick up the box, throw it, and then run into them to try and knock them down. Excellent. This sounds like a throw something check. Go ahead and make that roll. Uh, one disadvantage dice. Oh. Um, Hold on. Hold on. Sorry. I can just roll it for you. It's fine. I did it. There you go. Oh, there you go. All right. Well, whenever I run a game, I always take the, always say that the first roll is the one that can't, that, that, that counts. Okay. So we'll take your 57. Does that hit with your throw something check? It does. It's 65, yeah. Okay. So you just clobber uh, clobber this guy, and he's just gets a face full of it and, and is knocked out. Um, the uh, and, uh, as, and the other one who's standing next to him also passes out because the, because the way that this, this is working on there. Um, the whole area is filled with smoke. However, as you go running up, um, the uh, um, Katia uh, like clotheslines you with a, like a mailed arm and just smack, um, and drops you down, taking forty-four luck off. Uh, Takashi, your your rifle has been expended. You can have it would take a take you around to reload it. Uh, or you've got, I believe, some hand crossbows or some sort of other weapons on you that you could use at this point? Yeah, I do have a flintlock pistol as well. Okay. So, I'm gonna go ahead and twirl that and then yep. shoot Katya. Hopefully, maybe shooting her in the leg or something. Sure. There's some way to incapacitate her. Excellent. Um, go ahead and make your shoot something check. All right. And do I have any the challenge dice that you want me to roll? Uh, one challenge. Everybody who's in the room takes a challenge die because uh, yeah. there's always a chance that you could succumb to poison. Ooh, I would so, like to uh, push my luck. So let me explain how this works. Um, if you push your luck, you modify, you expend 10 points of your own luck, and you modify up your skill 10 points um, for every 10 that you spend, and you also get to roll a complication dice. Which is actually awesome, because then you're still doing, like, 99 damage, right? Yeah. Doesn't 99 miss? Because this is my skill. No, but, like, if you uh, bring up what, skill your, what is your skill? Is Shoot someone is a 90%. It's a 90%. So you spend 10 points of luck. Uh-huh. And then I need you to roll a challenge dice, um, which is could just be a regular D10, or you could just roll again. I'll just take it with one challenge die. On okay, that. that's fine. All right, so push my luck. And then... Okay, and so that's so you you have uh, failed this so or as far as the challenge goes, so um, the uh, process of doing so and pulling it out and the shot, um, your mask, you you your mask wasn't as tight as it could have been, and you end up taking twenty luck, so that's a total of thirty off of you. Okay. Um, but the shot does go through her leg, and she goes down to a knee because you're. Flintlock pistol, I think, does a 30 bonus damage. Let me check. It, uh... Damage 40 and deals two wounds when wounding. Uh, that's uh, the right... Oh, oh, oh. No, that's, a, that's trigger finger for... It says you have a flintlock pistol in addition to your other equipment. Uh, on the Red Lotus Society part. I thought the rifle was, like, an additional thing that I got because of... The rifle replaces your regular thing and there, so... So yeah, it, it does that. So she is out. Um, you managed to knock her, knock her out of the uh, combat. She's down to one knee and injured, but she's still with you guys. Um, you know, she's not she's not dead yet. Um, on that point here, um, Octavius, you're talking to the crowd, and there's these city guards coming up the street. Yeah. Uh, the time has come for the power of red tape. Uh, I am going to approach the city guards and, uh, 
I'm not going to do the voice, but I'll, 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 I'll mumble at them, like, this is out of your jurisdiction. There's already guards from the next precinct, or from the from the correct precinct here. Uh, you can't be here. You're going to get in so much trouble for trying to interfere in this thing. So it sounds like bureaucracy. Absolutely. Go ahead and roll a bureaucracy attack. It's all I know. <laughs> that is that is less than my bureaucracy of 80. Um, one of them turns to the other one and is like, is that true? I don't know. Go get the boss. And he leaves and heads up the street. All right. So I'm working those guys like a, like minions. Um, and every attack is basically successful at like, knocking a minion out. Perfect. So there's um, only one of them left. So that's that's good news. Yeah. Uh, the, that was Octavius. Um, William? So there's a crowd of people who are gathered by the window and they're definitely seeing like combat. Um, and uh, there's also Octavius talking to a city guard. And you also spot some thugs there. If Lena, if you want to bring your thugs in at this point in time to do a thing, you can do that as well. Um, but it's now William William's turn. Okay. Can thugs um, counter crowds? Sorry. Yeah, sure. So one of the one of the guards just left based on what Octavia said, but one guard is still there just speaking to him. Yeah. Okay. I would like to Oh boy. I would I would I would like to I want to shoot another window or shoot something else to distract him. I want okay. I want him away from Octavius. I don't want Octavius down there by himself. All right. Um you could I don't know, shoot shoot the ground if you've got something to throw. Ooh. Um I didn't actually ask you to describe where you were, but uh where are you right now? Do you have something in I'm hand on, that you can fling top, out of there? I am on top of the building. So, you know Where's what? You know what? I'm just going to start kicking down sh shingles and just causing a distraction just just not going to hold stuff off okay so this is not shoot somebody but rather uh distract someone so go oh. ahead and roll that okay uh does that meet your restriction oh it does not okay now uh ordinarily you cannot push your luck on attack rolls which is what this is um, unless you've got some special reason like Takashi does when he, he can push his luck on when he's making gunpowder checks. So you pry up a, a, a shingle and it falls off, but at this point in time, the guard has started to notice that the crowd has gathered and, and it's just not paying attention to what's going on uh, to, to, to shingles falling off the roof across the street. Uh, Cordelia. Um, she is going to, again, try and, she's going to attack, uh, what's her name, again, with one of yep. her throwing knives. Okay. Um, that hits, um, you the, the dagger lands point first and manages to, to be thrown hard enough to fit through her armor, and she's like a spurt of blood comes out. She starts bleeding from that wound. Um, she's, you know, is like pulls the dagger out uh, and then like holds her holds her chest where the uh, where the wound is. Uh, she's definitely not doing very well. Uh, it would be. You know, a few, like a couple more good hits like that, and she dies. Um, Elena. Um, since my, my castle's pretty clear into that back room, they came into the back room. Yeah. And I'm assuming that he was working with the orchid yeah, in the same spot it's it It's right was. there. Um, okay. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to but... conceal object. Okay. Uh, I have an 80% for that. All right. Um, I think in this case, with nobody else being in the room, you slip back there and you just scoop the thing up. Um, okay. I'm not going to even make you have to make a roll for it because why bother? Um, <laughs> okay, you also see that the, the glass flower <laughs> is there as well. Now, this is not a easy get away with crime. Like, 
they're definitely going to know it's going to be stolen and there's other people around as well but you definitely have the thing awesome uh, elegance was never our style <laughs> well, since i'm since i'm still back there can i smash the glass one or can yeah. i not do that as of like another no no go for it okay so i'm just gonna smash it unlike unlike in other growth playing systems this one is very fluid with the length of a round and also how much you can do in a round as long as everyone sort of gets is about the same time frame yeah you go back there you're like oh i got it oh look there's that thing grab it and and you break it um there is actually specifically a break something skill but i don't think it's necessary in this case actually no i think it is necessary in this case if you're going to break it i would like you to roll your break something skill which might be in anything else it isn't anything else okay um this is not an attack, so if necessary, you could push your luck on it. Uh, and you did not succeed, presumably, because a 53 is more than a 50. Would you um, like to push your luck to make this work? Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, so deduct 10 points, and I need you to roll again real quick, uh, just because you're going to add a complication die into it. Okay. Just one complication? Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, yeah, nothing, nothing untoward happens. You um, you break the uh, you you smash it. Uh, take a good, couple good stomps. The thing is broken very badly. Um, they were using like silver and platinum, copper wire and jewels, and the thing looked really pretty before you got to it. <laughs> Um, Morgan. Um, is, so Morgan was clotheslined, but is, is he on the ground or is yeah, he's, he... Yeah, he's clotheslined. He's sort of dumped on his butt in a graceless manner, but is, can easily stand back up. Uh, perfect. Um, goes into the room with Elena and, um, sees if he can assist in any way. Okay. Um, and also now, tries... Go ahead. You, to get to the room, you are going to have to try to force your way past uh, um, past Katya. She's injured. She's down on one knee because somebody shot her in the in the leg. Uh, but she's still armed and still threatening the immediate vicinity. If you go try to go past her, she's likely to just take a swing at you, uh, possibly okay. bodily injury. If you want to trickery to get past her, I would accept you making some sort of like a dodge tumble roll or run like hell roll either one of those would be acceptable or some other way that you feel would be an appropriate role to getting past her to get into that room um yeah so let's run like hell past her sure uh, do that and roll a, a roll of one complication die as well okay uh, is that a success for you no that's not all right 65 um if you would like to push your luck, since you're not actually attacking her in this particular case, I would accept you that you push your luck, but it will take you rolling another complication die. And okay. And luck off. Okay, we'll do that. So it'll be two. It'll be two. Uh, uh, just, challenge. Just roll. Just roll one, because you're tossing okay. one extra die. I don't have a macro set up for rolling single dice. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So um, you do get past her because you pushed your luck to do that. Um, but she is able to uh, kind of trip you up a little bit and uh, you end up stumbling um, and you get a f another face full of the gas. Um, but it, you you were expecting it this time and you didn't breathe any in, although it does sting the eyes, but fierce. Because I rolled crummy. And uh, uh, Takashi. Um, gonna run through to the back as well same same reason as i gave to morgan yeah. um actually could i like walk over and just knock her out like you could do you have a hit, hit somebody like a... hit bashing smashing hit butting check um actually can i just intimidate her i'll just intimidate someone i'll just tell her like if she knows what's good with if you know what's good for yourself you might, you're not gonna like you're not I'd gonna keep that. on doing Usually, usually it. once it goes to violence, uh, social skills don't work anymore. But in this case, you've got the upper hand and you're also still armed with yeah. presumably a second flintlock pistol rather than the two 
hand crossbows I think your character normally has. Yeah. So, so I just have just a gun to your gun to her face, be like, I think it's so best you go ahead decide. and roll an intimidation check and see if she uh she comes to that. All right. This is an attack, but yeah, just intimidate someone. Uh, and... one one challenge dies as usual. All right. All right. And my intimidate is an eighty percent. Okay, so she's like, okay, I surrender. Um, and as that happens, you start to smell something sweet. It looks like your mask might be wearing off, and you take 17 luck damage. I have these masks. Morgan! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't uh, say it would Octavius. last forever. Um, Got 99 problems out here. Uh, are, is hmm. I don't remember who's, who's thugs or are the thugs, but can we use the thugs to deal with the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, those are Lana's thugs, I believe. Are you are you comfortable yep. with using the thugs to get rid of the other guard? Oh yeah, definitely. Go for it. So tell me how that happens, real quick. Is that on me, Ron? I assume that's uh, on her. That's on her. It's her. They're, okay, they're yeah. her thugs. They're right. her hired goons. <laughs> Who's um, goons, Alice, anyway? So I mean, they're not the brightest tools in the shed, but they can still like you know read the room. So yep. they they look to Octavius and then like look at the guard and then decide that they're just gonna kind of like create like a wall in front of him and start like backing him up. Like they're just gonna like walk towards him as like this formidable wall. Okay. I believe they have a skill and I believe in this case it is uh, intimidate someone. Since these are guard thugs, I think unless your skill is listed on your sheet is better than 60%, I'm gonna give them 60% on this. Uh, roll an advantage die well because you are using two of them. Uh, I was talking and not, nobody can hear me. Uh, so two advantage and then no challenge. No challenge. Okay. Forty-five. Forty-five. That's successful. So they start pushing and bullying this guard who is not happy with it, and they get into something like an altercation out in the street, which functionally removes the guard from combat. And he didn't manage to get it around the corner where you are literally holding somebody at a gunpoint. However, there's a crowd of people who are talking and chattering about this out on the street there. So that's a problem that you're most likely going to want to deal with. Yeah. Octavius, that's what, what do you have for that? That's what I'm going to my team doing. It's going to be straight up intimidation. It's going to be like, do you really want to be part of this? That gun's coming for you next. Clear out. You saw nothing. Scram. Okay. Um, go ahead and make an intimidation. I'll give you a plus, uh, give you an advantage on this one. Um, but it's difficult to move a big crowd of people when there's actual violence going on. Yeah, well, what I'm trying to be is like, this violence is coming for you next, but yeah. Okay. Um, that is more than my intimidation, so I will try to put, I will push my luck. Uh, because this is an attack, pushing your luck is not an option I will in not this case, push my unless luck. you have some reason why it is. I do not. These guys are like, they're hearing you, but violence. But violence. But violence. All right, William. So, I don't think this team needs signals anymore. <laughs> no. Oh. So, so, if possible, I, I would like to order my I would myself and my people to go down to the crowd and together intimidate them. Okay. So, I'll have you make two rolls. One for you and one for your, your peeps. Your okay. peeps are, uh, don't normally get that, I think they're like 50% on their anything else checks. Okay. Um, so roll for yourself and then roll for your peeps. Okay. So we'll do the first one for me. Yep. All right. So you managed to talk some, talk, talk some of these people into dispersing. Okay. And then for my people. Oh, nah, not quite. All right. Um, so let me go ahead and and I'm gonna take take control away from you guys for just a little bit and and narrate out the rest of this scene. Um, so um, so you guys are have um, Elena has the thing has smashed it sees the back door. Um, it's got a complicated fiddly lock on it, but as luck would have it, somebody has the keys. 
and manages to get the back door unlocked and sneaks out the back. Um, while uh, while Takashi is currently holding um, holding Katya in a in a state of I've got you cornered now, Morgan sneaks up behind and with a with a well placed whack from one of the thracking sticks that one of the guards has, just knocks her out. Which is real bad in real life, but in the in the movies it's perfectly fine. She's gonna be okay. Um, and uh, and then realizes that there's a big crowd out there, and flings the smoke bomb through the window at the crowd, starting to really disperse it. Um, during that, Cordelia, Morgan, and Takashi out the back door. Um, Octavia sees it. Passes the message on, um, and through uh, a very comp- a very exciting running scene, which we don't have time for, manages to dodge the additional guards that are showing up because now some of the street people have spotted and called guards and said there's a big, big happening. So there's an exciting scene where Octavius and William uh, end up running from guards using uh, using some goons and and events at one point in time somebody taking a dive into the uh, into the canal and getting away. Now, but fortunately, all that distraction was happening out front and Elena was able to sneak away and make it to the safe house with the goods. Congratulations, you won! Woo! Yay! There we go. This flower's got nothing on us. <laughs> Just like we drew it up. <laughs> <laughs> Just all like we drew plan. it up. <laughs> all according to plan right. yeah and that uh and that was dusk city outlaws yeah thanks for running thank you thanks. awesome thank you so much and then uh, for everybody who's watching on on the stream uh thank you guys for watching too i hope you enjoyed it good Cheers. night theoretical audience Bye. see y'all next time <laughs> <laughs>